This video will be discussing case 1. A 45-year-old male who has been presented into emergency with possible sepsis and a urinary tract infection. Midstream urine, blood cultures and a swab from a wound in the leg was collected for analysis. To begin, we will introduce what a urinary tract infection is. A urinary tract infection, or UTI, is an infection that affects any section of the urinary system. This includes the urethra, ureters, bladder, and kidneys. Most infections involve the lower urinary tract, although if left untreated, UTIs may spread to the bladder and kidneys, causing bacterial cystitis and pyelonephritis. There are various organisms that may be the cause of a UTI. UTIs are most commonly caused by E. coli, resulting in 90% of all UTI cases. This is because E. coli is found as natural flora in the large intestine and therefore will be present in fecal matter that passes through. The perineum is a reservoir for E. coli present in fecal matter and provides E. coli the opportunity to be introduced into the urethra and spread throughout the urinary tract system. There are many factors which put individuals at risk into developing UTIs. The highest risk factor is gender, as UTIs are more common amongst women. 50% of women experience UTIs once in their life and are more common with increasing age and menopause. Poor hygiene may lead to the introduction of bacteria in the urinary tract. Instrumentation such as the use of catheter may introduce bacteria into the urinary tract. Uh, sexual intercourse and contraceptive methods such as spermicides and diaphragm also has the same effect, as well as increased risk with diabetes and abnormalities of the urinary tract. UTIs can be identified by their symptoms, which include feeling tired or shaky, frequent urges to urinate, and possible fever of chills in cases of pyelonephritis. Septicemia is the presence of a large number of bacteria within the blood, which results in the body invoking a strong, generalized inflammatory response in order to fight off the infection. This response can be potentially life-threatening. Septicemia can be caused by any microorganism entering the blood when the skin is punctured or cut, or during other forms of infection such as a UTI. If a large enough number of bacterial cells enter, or the immune system fails to contain the infection, it may progress to septic shock. This is mainly due to the intense inflammatory response that the immune system invokes to fight the infection, during which pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines flood the bloodstream and cause generalized inflammation which can lead to blood clots and drops in blood pressure. Symptoms include a fever above 38.8 degrees Celsius or below 36. Elevated heart rate and respiratory rate is common with shallow and fast breaths. In serious cases that progress to septic shock, drops in blood pressure leading to dizziness can also be common. To treat, antibiotics should be administered via IV as soon as possible with the patient monitored for two to four days. The urine sample should be examined under a microscope initially with cells and cultured bacteria quantified to identify any indicators of infection or any pathogenic organisms. The urine should not contain any white blood cells since the samples collected from the patients have a concentration higher than 40 times 10 to the 6 cells per litre this is an indication of infection. Since the number of both red blood cells and epithelial cells in the sample was found to be less than 10 times 10 to the 6 cells per litre, these results alone do not indicate an infection. However, bacterial colonies cultured from the urine sample that have a concentration higher than 10 to the 6 cells per litre indicate an infection. And since the patient has a colony count higher than 10 to the 8 cells per litre of E. coli, it indicates that E. coli has colonized the urinary tract and treatment is needed. E. coli is the main cause of UTIs globally. The blood samples collected from the patient consisted of six bottles, each incubated for 48 hours. Of these six bottles, Staphylococcus epidermidis was isolated in one of them. Coagulase negative Staphylococci, inclusive of Staphylopidermidis, is often reported as a frequent cause of sepsis. However, the fact that they are ubiquitous commensals on the human skin makes the microbiological diagnosis of a true blood infection difficult, as the detection of skin commensals in blood samples is often due to contamination rather than a pathogenic infection. Many studies state that the contamination can be defined as only one out of a set of three or more blood samples. In regards to our case, since 
only one out of the six bottles returned a positive result for the drawing organism, contamination is a highly probable cause, and therefore sepsis may not in fact be present. However, since the isolated organism from the blood sample matches that of the possible wound infection, sepsis cannot completely be ruled out just yet. Further testing and resampling is required to determine whether Staphylococcus epidermidis is a significant finding in our patient's blood sample. The blood samples collected from the patient consisted of six bottles, each incubated for 48 hours. Of these six bottles, Staphylococcus epidermidis was isolated in one of them. Coagulase negative Staphylococci, inclusive of Staph epidermidis, is often reported as a frequent cause of sepsis. However, the fact that they are ubiquitous commensals on the human skin makes the microbiological diagnosis of a true blood infection difficult, as the detection of skin commensals in blood samples is often due to contamination rather than a pathogenic infection. Many studies state that the contamination can be defined as only one out of a set of three or more blood samples. In regards to our case, since only one out of the six bottles returned a positive result for the drawing organism, contamination is a highly probable cause, and therefore sepsis may not in fact be present. However, since the isolated organism from the blood sample matches that of the possible wound infection, sepsis cannot completely be ruled out just yet. Further testing and resampling is required to determine whether Staphylococcus epidermidis is a significant finding in our patient's blood sample. From the results received, E. coli has been identified as the main organism in the midstream urine, specifically results from the microscopy and the culture. To confirm E. coli is a pathogenic organism that has caused this UTI and to rule out the possibility of staph epidermis as a possibility for sepsis, a few tests are required. For E. coli, the causative organism is placed on the McConkie, horseblood agar and chrome agar as all of these agars allow growth for fastidious gram-negative organisms. Once it has been incubated, the results from the agar should conclude as lactose fermenting pink colonies on the McConkie, good growth with beta hemolysis on the horse blood agar. The chrome agar would be used as an additional plate to confirm the growth of E. coli resulting in pink colonies. A confirmatory test would be an API 20E to validate that the causative agent of the UTI is E. coli. Two different sensitivity tests should be performed. The first will be a Pacific test and the other will be a generic test. The sensitivity test indicates the antibiotics resistance to the pathogen. This will be done on two MH agars. The general plate would include amoxicillin, ampicillin, norfloxacin, gentamicin, imipenem, and cefrotaxime, whilst on the Pacific plate, nitrofurantin, trimthoprime, and trimthoprime sulfame thoxazole would be included. The results would be that all of the antibiotics would be resistant with the greater resistance zone, specifically from amoxicillin, norfloxacin, and cefrotaxime. From here, treatments are then determined for a particular case. Since E. coli is the cause of the UTI, Antibiotics are typically the first line of treatment. Amoxicillin, nitrofuritone are examples of oral antibiotics given to patients with E. coli derived UTI infections. For uncomplicated UTI, a shorter course of treatment is given. With the increasing rate of antibiotics resistance, different antibiotics may be required to identify the appropriate one to use. Staphylococcus epidermis is from the wound which has spread into the bloodstream. Since it has been isolated from the blood culture and was present in the wound, to test for staph epidermis, a gram stain is taken to differentiate the negative and the positive gram bacteria as well as oxidase and catalase. In order to complete these tests, plating the culture on McConkie and horseblood agar would be necessary. McConkie would have small to medium pink colonies that are lactose fermenting and the horseblood agar would have good growth with gamma hemolysis. Gram positive cocci would be the result gained from the gram stain with catalase positive and oxidase negative. A biochemical test such as coagulase test is used to differentiate between Staphylococcus aureus and other Staphylococcuses. The results obtained from this would be coagulase negative. A confirmatory test would be an API staph, which will show the Staphylococcus epidermis as a causative agent for a possible circulatory infection, 
which may have caused the sepsis. But this is highly unlikely as the epidermis was isolated from one of the six bottles after two days from the blood culture. To confirm diagnosis for sepsis, a secondary set of blood samples should be collected and cultured again. The observed result will indicate the presence of sepsis if Staphylococcus epidermidis grows in more than one of the bottles. On the other hand, if there is little to no growth, like seen in the original blood sample, sepsis can be deemed not present, and the growth in the original sample can be attributed to contamination by skin commensals. In addition to this, the newly taken sample should be plated on a blood agar plate with the antibiotic novobiosin. In the case that Staphylococcus epidermidis is present, opaque 1-2 mm colonies will grow, and the bacteria will be sensitive to the antibiotic. To eliminate Staphylococcus aureus in this confirmatory test, one should plate the bacteria on DNAs and mannitol salt agar plates. On both of these plates, Staphylococcus epidermidis will be negative. Moreover, this would prove that the source of sepsis was caused by the organism at the site of the wounded area. Yet, it is not clear if sepsis is even present without performing these tests first. Furthermore, clinical observation of the patient should be made in the case that sepsis is present. Those with sepsis present symptoms such as decreased urine output, respiratory difficulty and disorientation. Although staph epidermidis is a liberating cause for sepsis, as it may have infected the patient's wound, as the patient has not presented these symptoms, it is unlikely that sepsis is there. As sepsis is a serious condition, further testing should be taken as precautionary action. Testing for disseminated intravascular coagulation, also known as DIC, should be undertaken as sepsis causes hematological abnormalities. These abnormalities include anemia, leukocytosis and thrombocytopenia, which can be determined by performing a full blood count and observing a blood slide. In addition, kidney and liver function tests can be performed as sepsis affects these vital organs. In the unlikely case that sepsis is present in our patient, antibiotics are administered typically within one hour of diagnosis due to the severity of the disease. As the patient has suspected sepsis, he should be placed on broad spectrum antibiotics to reduce any risk of the infection developing. Once the specific bacterium has been identified, more specific antibiotics are administered. Typical antibiotics to treat a Staphylococcus epidermidis infection are vancomycin. Due to bacterial resistance, majority of strains are resistant to penicillin and thus vancomycin is favoured. Overall, it is expected that sepsis is not present in our patient and that the result was due to contamination, yet further testing is required. Furthermore, it is expected that E. coli was the primary cause of the patient's urinary tract infection.